Greetings all, this is Harry Nick, how's everyone going? Time to once again have a look at the X-Wing meta, and unlike the meta watch we did last week, this is going to be the first major tournament that we talk about post-points change. Yes, this is the Toronto Systems Open. Oh, Canada, you have brought us some very, very interesting results. We have new factions, new cards, um, a new uh, meta, I want to say, although these results just look so open, so interesting. There are a few key things to watch out for. I do think it's worth mentioning uh, a couple of upgrades before we dive into this. First of all, Hate um, seems to be emerging as the new auto add onto Dark Side Force users, which is very, very interesting based on some of the results we have so far. Um, it's something that myself and Justin were speculating on, and I think it's a pretty good fit, um, even for like Vader and Kylo Ren, possibly even for the Dark Side Force users in wave three but something i really want you guys to keep an eye on is leia organa because it actually showed up in most of these rebel lists that we're going to talk about and i did make special mention of this during the uh points change when we went through all of those because leia organa is one of those elements look whenever i evaluate cards i always think of the possible floor and ceiling as in what's the worst it's going to consistently do versus the best it can do and the worst thing that leia organa can do is change one of your red maneuvers white during the game on the ship that she's on which basically makes her a sort of fixed version of adrenaline rush uh, but, of course, the ceiling with Leia Organa is you do it to multiple ships on your squad, potentially multiple times per game, which is insane for two points. I don't have to tell you guys how good that is. Indeed, it seems to be sort of warping the way people build Rebel lists because it is such a lot of potential upside. We'll get onto those specifics in a tick, but first of all, let's run through these stats. In the faction breakdown, Rebels are clearly on top. This is hugely contrasting to what we saw before the points change. Also, a presence from the new faction. Three Resistance lists and two First Order lists. Great to see. Uh, three Empire lists. Sadly, no Scum lists. Look, at this stage, I think we can pretty much accept with five factions, we're very soon going to have seven. We're not always going to see every faction in the top cuts. It's just, it's not that realistic, guys. Um, I mean, even when we were looking at three factions, uh, even if a faction was doing quite poorly, for example, just recently the Rebel faction or towards the end of first edition, the Empire faction, there was still pretty much always one or two lists, but... I don't think that's going to be the case anymore. If a faction's doing badly, it's pretty much not going to make the cut. We had a total of 48 small ships, two medium ships, and one large ships. Um, pretty much a continuation of what we've been seeing, but post points change, um, FFG were really pushing for a bigger presence of large ships. And on that regard, this is quite damning. Um, indeed, these new factions seem to favour the small ship options within those factions, apart from the First Order with the Upsilon class shuttle. Uh, which was actually the only large base ship being flown here. This may be indicative that FFG do have to push them even further. We had a total of no lists running two ships, six lists running three and six running four, and one of five, and actually a six of as well. And finally, on to ships being flown, it is the X-Wing on top quite comfortably. Given that it was already seeing not insignificant meta share and it did not go up in points in the points change, I'm not surprised to see this. Now, we do have a large amount of TIE Phantoms with eight here, but only one Whisper. We actually have way more generics than anything else. Also, six RZ-2 A-Wings, five T-70 X-Wings, Four B wings, three headhunters, U wings, tie FOs, uh, two quick draws in the tie SF, two Darth Vaders in the tie advanced, two sheathopedes, and one ofs of the Y wing Upsilon class shuttle, tie silencer, tie punisher, E wing, and arc 170. And just reflecting upon the key culprits uh, before the points change uh, fire sprays, phantoms, uh, punishers. The only thing that we're seeing a lot of uh, that we did see pre-points change was the Phantom, but that's mainly because of Whisper with Darth Vader, which is not being flown here. Despite the fact it's the same ship, it is actually a very different approach to using this ship. So we'll talk about that in a second. Let's move on to the list being flown. 
Actually, we'll talk about the Empire first. Only three lists to talk about. And yes, every list flew TIE Phantoms. And all but one flew Darth Vader. So we're already seeing some emerging preferences here. The list on the bottom here is actually very reminiscent of the lists that were being flown uh, before the points change. We've switched out Redline for Death Rain, which I think is pretty safe to say is a downgrade, but it is always worth pointing out when a list sort of survives a nerf unscathed and just plays a slightly less powerful version of that list, but it still makes cuts. It's pretty much an indication that that list was always very powerful. Also, um, these generic phantoms. So what FFG did during the points change is they upped the points on Duke, so you couldn't just fly four of the Sigma Squadron Aces with Duke. And what this player here has done in this middle list is subbed out one of those for Crackshot, uh, which is very, very interesting. It's definitely a downgrade, I think we can all agree. Uh, Duke is definitely what the TIE Phantom wants. It is so effective at powering out evade results. And the crack shot is just another offensive boost. It means that you have to sort of be careful the way you fly one of them. You want to make sure you get that value out of that. But at the end of the day, crack shot's only one point. Also, another way to get around this is just to forego your talents altogether and chuck in Vader instead of your fourth TIE Phantom. That's an interesting idea. Uh, also, yes, we have hate and fire control on both of these Vaders. Just really good generic value-driven cards. Fire control systems is just an awesome card on Vader because you're pretty much always going to have target locks anyway. And hate. Yes, I think we're going to see a lot more of this card. Seems like a really strong choice on Vader now that Supernatural Reflexes is, what, 32 points or more or whatever it is. Yeah, seems really, really solid. It means Vader is a very, very annoying target to take down. And it pretty much forces your opponent to sort of target uh, these Phantoms or Death Rain or whatever. And that means that Vader is pretty much free to do as much damage as possible. Okay, let's move up to the First Order with these two lists here. Uh, Null Quickdraw and Kylo Ren. And Scorch, Muse Quickdraw and Lieutenant Tavson. So in terms of things that we're seeing emerge here. We have FOs to sort of fill out the list. They're cheap enough that you can pretty much field them alongside whatever you want. Quick draw is the only thing that seems to be a staple here. The first post points change top 16 or 14 in this case that we're having a look at does not include a triple upsilon list, uh, which is good to see. Triple upsilon is sort of becoming the boogeyman of the format. Um, but from what I'm hearing, people are saying, look, it's annoying to fly against, but it's not impossible to beat. Um, so glad to not see it here in this system open. Indeed, there's a nice bit of diversity here. Uh, even if we have a look at Quick Draw, there is a fair bit of difference. We have Predator on one, Fanatical on both. We'll be curious to see what sort of emerges as a meta list on the First Order faction. But for the time being, we have a nice bit of diversity. Let's move over to the Resistance with these three lists here. And this is all X-Wing and A-Wings. Um, these Resistance players want none of these large base ships. Um, I can sort of understand where they're coming from. I've been playing around with Han Po recently, and look, to be honest, it is pretty rough. Um, flying that large base ship is no mean feat. But it's good to see Poe getting a lot of flying here. Poe being significantly more expensive than basically all the other options on the T-70. But yeah, double actions, it cannot be denied how powerful that is. We're also heavily favouring these Initiative 5s, Talos and Lintro and Lulo Lampor. In fact, Lulo and Poe is on every single list. The difference is these first two lists actually show us vastly different points values on the A-Wings and X-Wings. To the point where if you strip off enough points from this second list, you can actually fit a whole other ship in. It's always a sign of a very powerful build when it can function on a very low point or high point threshold. And also instead of Talison and the extra ship, we can run near Num. And Nia Num is another very, very interesting ship. Indeed, we have no Elo Atsis in this list. I think that's another ship that's absolutely worth looking at. So as we move forward with the Resistance, yes, I'm pretty confident it's going to be these small base platforms that are going to continue to see play. I'm interested in the Star Fortress, but I think ultimately the players in the top cuts want to go for more efficiency. So this makes perfect sense. Okay, let's move along to these Rebel lists because we actually have six to talk about this time. Uh, everything ran Luke and or Wedge, uh, which is pretty much a continuation of what we saw before the points change. This first list here with Luke and Wedge and Dutch. Also a bit of spice with Braylon Stram, Nora Wexley and AP5. That's really, really cool to see. Indeed, a lot of these are really, really light builds. Apart from this first one, we can see 
barely anything. We're far more interested in pilot abilities and frames more than anything, which I think is actually quite a good thing. It's a healthy thing for the game to see less of a focus on upgrades. If we move on, we see Wedge Corrin on Cassian and Wedge Biggs, Red Squadron Veteran, and Magva Yaro. We have some Ewing action actually entering into the meta, which is really, really cool to see. Um, yes, again, layers on all of these lists, as you might expect. And a nice bit of diversity, but look, honestly, the key thing going on here is every list ran at least one X-Wing. X-Wings are looking pretty hot right now. Basically, every Rebel list before the points change ran at least one, and I think that's pretty much going to continue. Um, there is always the argument, should FFG, given that they did alter so many ships, had a look at the X-Wing? I think FFG and us players in general do want to see the X-Wing scene meta play. Um, it's a really fun, exciting ship to play with, and the game's called X-Wing, so I think it's what we can come to expect. Let's move it over to the top table and talk about the runner-up. Now, before I go into this list, yes, I do have to talk about what actually happened during this tournament. Unfortunately, during the last game, um, this player here made an error, which would have caused two of his B-Wings to fly off the board during turn two or three. Um, it was actually a bit confusing. You can watch the footage down below. I'll post the um, link to the Twitch video. And ultimately, that led to that player conceding, which is rough, but at the same time, I can understand. It's not a very fun position to fly with. It was the final in the system, so I would encourage anyone in that situation to play it out. But at the same time, I'm not going to tell anyone not to concede if they really want to. Having said that, as as fortunate as that is, let's talk about these lists and focus on how they got to the top table at a systems open. And this list is all about the frames. All free upgrades apart from Leia Organa, which is so, so utterly efficient, um, just generic X-Wings and B-Wings. Um, I like the presence of B-Wings. We have a good use for knife fighters. I really, really dig that. I think they're a really fun, interesting thing. I think um, in, before the points change, people really sort of viewed them as a worse version of an X-Wing. But now points, points change, it feels like they actually have a better home. Now, uh, layer on Zeb. First of all, I do want to talk about the inclusion of Zeb Aurelius here because I've made the comment before that I don't think FFG really are adding anything to the Sheath of P class shuttle by printing Zeb. He costs two more points than AP5, and I think 99.99% of the time AP5 is going to be better. However, I will concede the point here that it's an interesting choice to go alongside Leia, and I think the mentality here is simply Zeb is better at protecting his own platform, and in turn, he's better at protecting Leia. If you treat Leia as sort of a palp substitute here, I guess you could say, where well, she's a really important crew member that you do want to try and make survive later into the game because the more time you have to use Leia, the more power she has. I can understand what's going on here. And look, X-Wings and B-Wings both have Talon rolls. If you can use Leia multiple times, it means they can Talon roll, target lock, focus, barrel roll, boost, whatever they need to, to make sure they punch as much damage through on your opponent's ships as possible. And that seems really, really decent. End of the day, this is a list with 25 hit points. I like that this is more focused on the frames. There's no shenanigans with upgrades apart from layer or pilot abilities. And it just looks like a really fun list. Let's move on to the champ, Mr. Kalen Wong. Again, we are focusing on the ship frames. Uh, all of the Z95s in the three Bandit Squadron pilots, a Blue Squadron pilot on the B-Wing, a Blue Squadron escort on the X-Wing, and a Partisan Renegade on the U-Wing. So all generics. Again, uh, pretty much taking all the free upgrades we can take. We do have a tractor beam on the B-Wing, which is kind of fun. Uh, tractor beam is always a fun upgrade to use because sometimes, just sometimes, it's going to lead to the craziest of shenanigans. And look, you do have five other ships in this list, so if you can sort of force your opponent to get shot by all five other ships with one less dice... Um, perhaps that barrel roll means that one or two of your ships get a shot when they previously wouldn't, or it would uh, make a better range, or put your opponent's ship on a rock. There's all kinds of compromising things you could do with that, and I like it here. It feels like it's just good enough to make an impact on the game, and it's, again, pretty darn cheap. Also, layer and tack officer on Partisan Renegade. Meaning you can coordinate and full stop the next turn, or use layer to full stop, coordinate, and then be able to full stop again the next turn. 
just making sure your options are as open as possible. There's no focus on initiative here, it's all just as many guns on the table as possible. We have a total of, what is it, um, 12, 20, 26, 37 health total, so a lot of work for your opponent to shoot through, and just a lot of red dice. A perfectly reasonable way of building X-Wing lists. And well done to both Peter and Kalen to making the top table. Really cool approaches to building lists and something I expect to see a lot more of, potentially on the other factions as well. And that is our top 14 from Toronto. Thanks for watching, guys. Yes, we do have another FFG article today with the Sith Infiltrator. That will be the next video out on the channel. In the meantime, do not forget to like and subscribe. Like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Reddit. Please consider supporting the Patreon. Thank you so much to everyone who already supports the Patreon. It means the world to me. It's the reason I can come back and keep making these videos week in, week out. If you'd like to join in on that, all the links for that are down in the description below. I'll catch you in the next video.